So now we've got the instrument put together, it's time to play it. Now, I do a lot of master classes on bass clarinet, and inevitably, the clarinet teacher is the one that asks the question, tell my students what you have to do differently to play the bass clarinet. With due respect to my many colleagues who've asked this, I think it's the wrong question. I think we want to concentrate on what you want to do the same as playing the clarinet. The vast majority of us came to the bass clarinet as advanced clarinet players before we ever tried to play a bass. Let's not throw out what we already know. Let's try to apply it to this slightly different instrument. There are a couple of things we're going to do differently, and we'll get to talking about that. But basically, I want your, your embouchure to be exactly the same as it would be for clarinet. The huge advantage of that, to me, is I'm going back and forth between clarinet and bass clarinet constantly. On a piece like Miraculous Mandarin, you're switching three, four times a page sometimes. If you're having to think of the embouchure as two different things, I think that's a real deficit. We want it to be as much the same as possible. So I want you to form your embouchure the same way you would for clarinet. Now, if you're not an advanced clarinet player, you're going you're gonna to want to go back to your teacher and make sure that your embouchure is set. But basically, a firm bottom lip. The one minor difference we're going to have, obviously, is looking at the size of the mouthpiece. It's confusing to many players first starting the bass. They look at it and they say, everything's huge. It's not much bigger than the clarinet. It's a little bigger. We're going to want to set the bottom lip in the same relationship like we do on clarinet. Where the reed and the mouthpiece separate is our pressure point. So obviously, that's going to be a little further down the mouthpiece on bass than it is on clarinet. When you're sitting with good posture, the instrument should be able to be brought right into the embouchure without adjusting your head. If you're having to reach up to get to it or drop your neck, you're going to interfere with wind flow. So we want to be able to just bring it in, ready to play. So the embouchure, we're going to form with the same firmness that we do with clarinet and setting the top teeth. Now, here comes one of the differences. On bass clarinet, you cannot exert the same pressure on the reed that you can on a clarinet reed. Because of the width of the reed and the fact that the xylems, the tubes, the, the stronger part of the reed, are further apart, the reed is actually slightly thinner. If you exert the same pressure on a bass clarinet reed, it's not going to vibrate. And when you go to try to play loud, in actuality, you're just going to get a lot of buzz. How I think of the embouchure, in its application to the mouthpiece, is slightly more open than on clarinet.